Star Stadium in San Francisco, where this afternoon on their first tour ever, the present champions of all Russia, Dynamo Kiev, take on the California Clippers, who were the 1967 pro champs in the United States. I'm Mario Machado, and with me this afternoon to bring you all the exciting color in action, the coach of the UCLA soccer team, an authority in this great game of soccer, Dennis Stora. What do you think about the two teams, Dennis? Well, this is a great occasion in American soccer, Mario, mainly because this Russian team is reputed to be one of the best the best to come out of Russia in the last 20 years. And the interesting thing about it is that the uh, Clippers side is mainly made up of players with a background in Eastern European uh, soccer. So we have here uh, Eastern European players from Russia and many from Yugoslavia who are playing for the Clippers. And the Yugoslavian Clippers are really representing the best of what is American soccer. We're well, going to see how it comes out today. Well, the interesting thing is that the two coaches, Viktor Maslov Sr., who is well known for what he's done with Dynamo Kiev, and Obradovich uh, of the California Clippers have played against each other five times before and the Yugoslavian Dr. O of the Clippers having won three of those five times. So I really think there's more to it than just an exhibition game. It's going to be an all-out type affair. Yes, there's a tremendous uh, rivalry between uh, Dr. Brad Obradovich and uh, uh, the Russian coach and I know the Russian coach is going to be after a win today to try and draw on his level with him. Well, we're going to be looking at the players and introducing them to you uh, as soon as we get a chance to establish all the 11 players of each starting side. Stadium, we're looking out from the press box. Ball intercepted. And they say Fernandez tried to trip number seven, Bagovic, and a free kick, the first free kick of the game. Yes, I think the Russians are already lining up in a, into the, the normal 4-2-4 system uh, used all over the world. Now... And there's a goal, a rapid goal, and a rapid goal from Dinamo Kiev. A free kick high in the air, a headshot towards the inside, and a first-timer. And Zemanovic had no chance. No, he brought that ball straight over, took it on a hook shot. It was a brilliant shot with no hesitation at all. The defense were caught napping rather square, and the goalkeeper wasn't even... ...died far too late. So here we are, probably one minute of play having gone by, and Dynamo Kiev in the lead, one to nothing. Clipper still with the ball, trying to get it in. Heroes, oh, my, it's all alone! And he scores! And the game is all tied up. Fernandez coming through on a beautiful pass with his right foot putting it high into the net. 1-1, one, one, Dennis. Cirilla Fernandez, every time he gets a chance like that, he's got great power. He wouldn't be hustled off that ball, and he is straight into the roof of the net. An easy chance, but one which he might have uh, missed had he not uh, hit it straight through. The goalkeeper was coming out. A good shot. We have about two minutes gone. Two goals scored. 1-1 one, one is the name of the game. It looks like a high-scoring match throughout. Clippers with the ball. Heroes. Losing the ball, number 11 of Dinamo, Porcuyan, the world-class player, tearing down the sidelines. Stops the ball, looks for a teammate, tries to get through, could not get through Marin. Marin again loses it. Ball being brought inside. Number 10 with the ball, Serebryanikov, puts it through, cleared away by the chopper, and puts safely out of play. Very sticky in midfield. Yes, that's Ferenc Medved on the ball at the moment. He's the man who will be working up into attack, but he's beaten there. I expect to see the uh, forwards having a slight advantage because of the ground conditions. We might have, it, indeed have a high-scoring game here. That's Bagovic, number seven, on the right. And the ball goes out of bounds, and when that happens, it's a throw-in. Do you see any particular strategy forming or styles of play that are coming to bear now that they're one goal each, and really the testing period is quite through at this point. I think they know what each team wants to do, and that's score. Fernandez. Yes. There's a slight, uh, the uh, Clipper side are only having two men up. At the moment, they're, they're not really going into a flat-out attack. Both sides employing a 4-2-4 system. Uh, that is with two midfield men uh, picking up the loose balls and feeding the four forwards, and always that extra fullback behind in the four, four fullback system. Radikoff played that ball deep downfield and a mistake by Chop, but safely taken by Gavrich. Chop now with the ball at midfield. 
Passing it beautifully to Mitic. Mitic running through. Kowalik feeds it away, and here's the shot at goal by Davidovich, and just to the left of the goal. Yes, uh, Fernandez was open at that time. I thought they were going to pass to him. He, he could have hit that shot on the turn. He was in a very good position. What a breathtaking start. Dinamo Kiev, champions of Russia with the ball, losing it. Clippers playing the short passing game. Dinamo with the ball, long ball. Porkuyan running through, the ball cleared away safely. Very dangerous play. Zephyr, the Hungarian with the ball, Clippers. Clippers, of course, attacking from left to right on your screen in the dark jerseys. Dinamo again on the attack, and that's Sabo, the world-class player. Sabo's footwork is something we'll be looking for. He's a man who is not afraid to go forward right through into the defense, beat his man and have a shot. He plays a completely roving game, and he turns up anywhere. Ball quickly put into play by the Clippers. Stojanovic tapping it. Gavrich with the ball. And here we have an opportunity that is lost by the Russians. Medved, international player, losing it out of bounds. The middle of the field uh, is very chopped up, is it not, Dennis, in your opinion? Yes. I don't know how they hold uh, the ground. Do they have long studs on today? Yes, they'll have their long studs. Now, I do, do notice that the uh, ground conditions are such that they're playing rather loosely onto each other. There's not the very tight marking that might be associated uh, with two teams of such world class as this. Fernandez gets unceremoniously dumped on the grass at Kizar, and it's a free kick for the Clippers. A bad pass by Davidovich, intercepted by the white-shirted Russians. They're on attack. Turianchik. Both sides, Mario, I think are having a little difficulty getting used to this, uh, these conditions. Particularly the difference is this very bad patch up the middle and then some very good patches of grass elsewhere. They'll try and keep the ball, I think, out to the wings, but it's much greener and much firmer. Davidovich passing out to the right to Marin. Marin losing the ball. Russians now. Beautiful combination. Look at that. Ball goes out of bounds. Referee indicates Clippers. Again headed out of bounds. This same team, these same two teams, move up to our part of the world, Dennis, next Sunday when they take on the... Uh, they, they meet one again, uh, once again, at the Coliseum, and a large crowd is expected there for this return match. Yes, it's going to be a great day for Los Angeles sport. Uh, we've had some fine teams come from Europe, including the... Uh, uh, the Portuguese team from Benfica, Manchester United, and this ranks with any side that's come from Europe. Russians at midfield with the ball. Still not very dirty in their white shirts. None of them really have slipped considering the bad and treacherous conditions. The deep pass through, gone astray, picked off by the chopper. Clippers with the ball. Marin on the right. It's an exciting player, very small, very fast, and he puts it beyond the reach of Fernandez. Yes, I expect to see Fernandez used in a man in a, in a, pushing him through for the, with a short pass and use his great explosive power and shooting qualities today. He's trying to get loose the whole time. Russians, oh, running into the middle, still with the ball. The ball is taken away from him on a sliding tackle by Gavrich, giving the Russians their first corner kick. Yes. Moran ever dangerous there. He was almost, I think he got a left-footed left shot in there. It could have been a goal. Short corner kick quickly taken by the Russians, and they hooked it out of bounds. And when the, offend, the uh, attacking team puts it out of bounds, it is a goal kick. Goal kick taken from the six-yard mark, and they're playing it short, trying to keep ball control the whole time. If they can bring this type of team in on a regular basis, this level or caliber of play, I think then that soccer will get its uh, second breath, if you will, Dennis, because people do want to see the best, and Dinamo is surely one of the best teams. Oh, yes, with uh, Dinamo as an example of top-class European soccer, and now the California Clippers, with the addition of players like Fernandez and John Kualik, uh, must rank with any, any American side we've seen uh, to date in the two professional years of American soccer. Russians breaking through. Very dangerous, high leaping kick. No call by the referee. And Kowalik fakes his man right at the center stripe. He's moving now towards the Russian goal, looking for a teammate, puts it high in the air. Kiros has it, fakes it with his left foot, puts it in the middle, and it's 
intercepted by Dinamo's fullbacks. Yes, the inside forwards are having difficulty in moving into a position to take through passes. They're, it's very slippy in front of goal. Number two, Medved, the international with the ball. Sabo, also World Cup player, trying to get through. Kent pushes it back safely. Ball put in the middle. Sefer comes through. Fernandez gets the ball, puts it back, and here are the Clippers on the attack. Midich. Kowalik with the ball. Can't win in a tussle with Medved. Yes, that was uh, Soskikin who broke up that uh, attack there. He's the general of the penalty area for the Kiev side. Very powerful man. A long pass. Uh, that the linesman said no offside. It was too deep for the Russians to catch before it went over the end line. And the Clippers again put it into play. The Dynamo Kiev team has the distinction of having beaten one of those great soccer sides of all time, Glasgow Celtics, in one of the European Cup matches last year, which put them out of action for good. It's an exciting game. Dynamo Kiev have never won the European Cup, but they've always been in contention many, many times. Sabo with the ball. He's Hungarian. Plays for this Russian side. Ball is very, very slippery there in the center where it's very muddy. Hofved. Still with the ball for the Clippers. Trying to get it out of there safely. Puts it way across field to Zephyr. Zephyr now moving forward. Kicks it high and deep to Kowalik. Cleared away. Not a great difference in styles of play, uh, Mario, mainly because, in fact, many of these uh, players had their so soccer background in the same area of the world. That was Puzac passing the ball off. Ball put out to the left wing. Sefer cleverly traps the ball, brings it under control, moves forward, trying to find some of his teammates. The Clippers now looking to get their second goal. The score all tied up 1-1, and those two goals came rapidly in perhaps the first three minutes of play. Kiros putting it through, again taken by Sosnikin. The moment neither side able to force a player open. That's Chop leaping over the back of a player, which is an infraction. We have a free kick for the Russians. This is Medved's role. He often moves up into attack, often goes up in the tradition that Glasgow Celtic uh, used, that of a fullback going up as an extra man. And we can, may expect to see Medved during the game occasionally carrying on straight with the ball up the wing and making that extra man. Russians in the center circle. Number eight, Sabo, their World Cup Hungarian player, puts it out to the right wing, chips it into the middle. Number nine, Puzac running in. The ball cleared away by Chop. Corner kick. Yes, he looked dangerous. Puzak was going through then, and that's all he could do, give away that corner kick. Big tight marking now in the penalty area. He'll get at least a two-on-one situation. Right footer, out swinger, cleared away by Gavridge. Russian still with the ball. Ball still in play. Still being controlled by the Russians. A remarkable little duel going on between those two players. Down the line the whole way, coming 20 yards. We have another infraction. The Clippers have a free kick. Correction, the ball went out of bounds, and they're going to throw it in. Some more people still coming in here, Dennis. I can't see the crowd beneath us. I can hear them, but I can't see them, and the other side is quite fully populated at this time. Oh, yes, there must be, I think, uh, 15 to 20,000 people here today. Zephyr took a shot from about 30 yards out, just skimmed along the ground, and the goalie looked at it without even trying for it. What about this new goalkeeping rule where you can do that, Dennis? Yes, it was noticeable there that he didn't bother to bounce the ball. He dribbled the ball out a bit because he can only take four steps now. He may not take more than four steps. Uh, formerly, he'd just uh, bounce the ball and keep going out to the penalty. Area. Now, four steps, he must kick it. He stops time-wasting uh, with goalkeepers. Sefer trying to see Kowalik. Couldn't get him. The Soviet Dynamo Kiev team on the move. Gavrich comes in there, intercepts, puts it to Kiros. Little Bill out on the left. Three-year veteran with the Clippers. Popular player in the Bay Area. Davidovich, two-year veteran, acquired from Red Star Belgrade, putting it out to Sefer, who is in this attacking role as fullback. 
ball out of bounds. Pippa's trying to hold this ball a little tighter. They're trying to force a player loose all the time. Whereas we expect to see the Russians probably hit the, the long through balls as soon as they get their attacking style going. There are two distinct styles of play that are evident now. The Clippers playing very short, precise passes and the Russians going for that long ball. So sneak in with the ball, taps it back to his goalkeeper, Radikoff. Like many of the, uh, any sport that uh, Russia has taken up, they've absorbed the best of all styles. they all their game linked to tremendous fitness. It, it's, uh, it's neither the stroking artistry of the Brazilians or the Italians. Fuzac giving the ball to Sabo, who ran into the open space and the ball was put away out of bounds. Russians, I think, always a threat within that 18, because they seem to know exactly where that ball is coming. Yes, there's a certain hard efficiency about their, pl their play and tremendous teamwork. Their coach has said that, in fact, this is not a team of stars, it's a team uh, of players, but their whole style, their whole strength based on pure teamwork, even though they have four international players amongst them. Little passing going on in the clipper half of the field, the Russians with the ball, looking for an opening find their number 10 Sebryanikov alone still with the ball getting through one defender a sliding tackle and the ball put out to the right wing for Kuyan there number 11 to meet the ball faking his man dancing with the ball puts it across with a left foot high and deep cleared away here's an opportunity left foot first timer going over the post with a Great jump by Stoyanovich to make sure it doesn't settle into that corner, Dennis. Yes, it's an indication of Pukoyan's class. He's moved in from the left wing and he's playing the midfield uh, role. I think they're using the, their strongest players to roam in an effort to create openings. Now, did And with the score, California Clippers 1 and Dinamo Kiev 1. We'll be back with more action after this important message. We're in the first half, the score's all tied up 1-1 here at Kizar Stadium between the Russian champions Dinamo Kiev and the California Clippers. Oh, very exciting so far. Looks like uh, whoever gets that second goal will probably make his team play defense and just pack that one goal lead. Do you think that's a probability, Dennis? This is, this is very possible, Mario. Fernandez, a wonderful chance here. He's Left-footed shot by Kowalik on a return pass, just going by the post, and the score still is 1-1. Russians never unnettled. They seem very calm about all these attacks on their goal. Yes, a good long through ball there. The Russians, in fact, are a superbly disciplined side. Ball tapped out of bounds. Porkuyan trying to make the turn, couldn't get around, and now the Russians have that corner kick. I think it's an indication, Mario, that uh, in these first few minutes there is little or nothing between the two teams in class. It, it's a good indication that a world-class team like uh, Kiev can come over here and meet a team equally good, the California Clippers. Great high center and safely put back from Sefer to Stoyanovich. I noticed one thing in the gear that the uh, Russians are using, a lot of them are not using the low-cut boot. I noticed particularly Porkuyan, number 11, playing with high tops, which is very rare in modern-day soccer, unless he's wearing some type of anklet protection. Yes, uh, this is probably because, in fact, uh, Kiev will play on heavy grounds. The, the lighter boot has been developed quickly in South America, where the grounds are light. Shot from Sefer right into the hands of goalkeeper Radikov. Now the California Clippers, uh, through the California Soccer Football Association, presents this game. And with the type of fan reaction they're getting, this looks like the uh, trend of things. International contests, rather than playing against Chicago or Detroit, but meeting great international sides here on their home field. Yes, I think this is a good indication uh, as well, uh, Mario, that uh, some of the better players now are all fine shot there fine shot there by uh, number 10 uh, Sebrano there's a great one-two pass soccer is a game of little flicks and a lot of understanding between the forwards and he saw number 10 coming through put it to him and he fired it with his right foot we have charging from the back by number five, Kulikovsky, the center half of the Russians on Fernandez. So Davidovich of the Clippers. The Clippers, of course, in the darker uniforms, the Russians playing all in white. Clippers moving left to right on your screen towards the Russian goal. 
Sosnikin heading the ball away. Number 10, Zerebryanikov with the ball. Fakes his man, dribbles through the middle, crosses the center stripe, moving towards the goal, looking for an opening. Overruns the ball smartly, then loses it. Oh! Number 9 through all by himself. And Puzak scores number 2 for Dynamo Kiev. And a great single move. Yes, that was a bad mistake, Mario, by the Clippers' defense. They man dribble through the ball. Full backs were four of them in position, and they all left him one uh, left him to each other, and he just went through. Here we here we see number nine Sebryanikov breaking through. Stoyanovich coming out, trying to tackle him, and with his right foot putting it past any defender. So we're back to live action. Dinamo Kiev have gone out in front two to one. We're still in the first half. I would say 20 minutes of the game, 20 of 45 minutes have gone and the Russians lead two to one on, like Dennis pointed out, a defensive lapse by the Clippers. Yes, that's the first, uh, the game has been very equal until now. That's the first real indication that uh, we've had of the Kiev team being on top. Bagovic putting it in the middle. Beautiful pass, the give and go, and two deep in, Stojanovic comes out, collects it for his team. The Clippers have not made any true mass penetration. There are one or two strikers running through towards goal, but they have not gone through as the Russians have done. Yes, well, I don't think we've seen yet the best of uh, Cyrilo Fernandez, who is very explosive. Russians on the attack, out on the wing with the ball, putting it across the goal mouth. Zephyr heads it away safely, but Russians still have it. Number seven, Bagovic with the ball. Davidovic comes through with the ball from the Clippers. This is Davidovic's strength, this long driving through, took the ball through his man. Very powerful player indeed. Made a beautiful move and then gave the ball to the other team with a bad pass. His strength rather tends to be defensive rather than attacking. He needs, I think, to be able to distribute the ball a little bit better. Here we go again. Here's an opportunity. And the shot muffled by number two, Sefer, who's having a tremendously difficult task in keeping track of the fast, fleet-footed Russians. It's becoming apparent, uh, Mario, that in the penalty area, as green as they look, uh, the footing is treacherous. And there was almost another mistake leading to another goal. I think we're going to see quite a lot of, quite a few goals if the conditions continue to chop up like they are now. Sefer put the ball out of bounds there, but then the linesman awarded a free kick to the Clippers for a pushing foul. So Gavrich, with his left foot, puts it back into the goal mouth area. Stojanovic applying that four-step rule, bringing the ball to the farthest end of that goal or penalty area and booming it out of there for the Clippers. With these new balls that they're playing with, they are water repellent, are they not? And don't get waterlogged? Yes, they won't, uh, they won't increase in wet. There will uh, be a slight film of water on them, but the weight of the ball, and this is very important, uh, will not change. That weight, if I remember right, my statistics, the ball is about 27 inches around, and here's a bad pass nearly taken away from the goalkeeper by one of those Russian forwards. And 16 ounces in weight, at playing time at least. Hoffed with the ball for the Clippers. Putting it into the middle, Midic loses the ball. Number seven, Bagovic collects for the Russians. Great ball control in this very treacherous field. And here's the chopper, crossing the center stripe for the Clippers, looking, putting it through. Kowalik keeping it, deciding whether to break through the middle, and he loses the ball in a sliding tackle to Krulikovsky. Fernandez being very closely marked there. He needed to move inside his man to have a chance, but they're marking, they've obviously heard of his reputation there. Give me a very close mark on it. Bagovic on a one and one losing the ball. Russian still with the ball. And Chop for sort of hooking after the tackle was made, giving the Russians a free kick. We're going to have difficulty, Dennis. I see the numbers becoming obliterated on the jerseys. We hardly know these players. Deep ball. The tradition in Europe has not been, uh, as it, here in America, to have numbers on both sides. This is, I think, something the Europeans can learn from the American system. Great headshot by number five, Kulikovsky. The defenders are very strong and big, as opposed to the Clippers defenders, who are short, compactly strong, but not as tall. Sliding tackle, bringing... Russian player Porkuyan down on the ground, and it's a throw-in. Porkuyan's very fast on the outside run there. Now here's a great shot of some of the fine crowd that's here. It has been, it has been raining, and there are threatening clouds over Kizar Stadium. 
Chop, number five, playing the ball to Seffer. Right fullback moving into attacking position, crossing half field, beating his man, and then losing it. Bagovic safely playing it back. The Russians are settling down very much now. They're not scared to move the ball about in defense, play the ball back, as long as they can complete, complete uh, possession all the time. They're not holding to their regular positions, and here comes that speed again. The boy still with the ball. Oh, oh it hits the post! He beat the goalkeeper who came out, and one of his teammates sliding in missed the ball. It hit the post, rebounded out, the ball still in play. Clippers with the ball. That would have been a remarkable goal. Pukoyan beat his man on the outside and, and squared the ball within a few inches of the goal. In fact, it swung in and hit the post and just needed nudging in. It's a bad miss there by Kiev. That was an interesting angle. He was on the touchline, and that means he was shooting at 90 degrees. Russians on the attack. Porkuya, number 11, with the ball. Putting it safely in. Oh, give and go. Porkuya and couldn't get there in time. Ball cleared by Sefer. I think these Clippers uh, uh, four fullbacks will have to mark much tighter uh, to stop these fast moving. The, the Russians are wandering about all the time, never still, trying to find an open space. And the three times now the Clippers fullbacks have been caught napping by playing two square. Little dancing going on there, one and one. The Russians still with the ball. Ball put out of bounds and a corner kick given. And that's for Kuyan, a World Cup player that Dinamo Kiev has five of. Right foot, out swinger. Ball cleared away, but again badly. Here's a running shot at goal by number six. Turianchik and it goes wide and the Clippers have a goal kick. Yes, I don't think we should see much midfield shooting because the, uh, the midfield patch there is so heavy. It's, it's a shooting out of a quagmire. They'll try and put this ball out onto the wings and then bring the ball back to their forwards as they come through. Three-year veteran, resident of California now. Chop putting it out. Kowalik, the boy from Chicago, top scorer in the NSL, giving the ball to Davidovich, who now has the ball, trying to get away, loses the ball. Number 11, Porkuyan on this side now, on the left side, dancing, weaving, getting away, trapping the ball, back kicking. Yes, Porkuyan's wandering all the time. He's already played both in the center, on the right wing, and now he's turned up on the outside left. Sefer had to use some physicalness to get that ball out of play, and the Russians have a free kick for charging violation. Number seven, Bagovic to take that kick. Referee saying, bring it back a bit. Right footers, headed away, and here number four, dashing into the penalty area, Levchenko losing the ball. Fernandez, no chance, got tripped. I thought that was a rather odd move, catching the ball like that, but it's a free kick for the Clippers. Clippers have to attack now. They're moving. They're just living chop. He's the only man back left in their own half. Davidovich now on the right here, trying to beat his man, being forced to the outside. Marin with the ball, puts it across the middle, cleared away safely by the Russians, who... It's a fair bump. An old-fashioned shoulder charge. You don't see very much of it nowadays. It's Most of the accent is on ball work, but you can charge a man uh, shoulder to shoulder if both men are going for the ball. Play getting a bit rough now, a little more physical contact. Kowalik with the ball, breaking away from his man. Beautiful pass. Oh, let's see what kind of a foul that is. The foul was in the penalty area. It should be a penalty kick, but let me see. The referee has his hand up saying it's an indirect. What could it be an indirect for, Dennis? Uh, I think he's giving an indirect for obstruction. Uh, they were obstructing uh, Sorella going for the ball. I thought personally Sorella uh, Fernandez was offside at that stage, but for an obstruction, it's not a direct free kick. It's indirect, which means the ball must be played either by uh, another clip, a clipper or it must go off a Russian defender to be put into the net. About 16 minutes left to go, 29 minutes having been played. 2-1 the score in favor of Dinamo Kiev, an indirect free kick. All players they must keep 10 yards away from the ball until the ball is kicked. poorly played or very well protected there was a wall there of Soviet defenders oh too long a wait you've got to play it back 
Huffet putting it in the air. Fernandez jumping for it. And a scissors kick by Davidovich goes wide, and we have a goal kick. No messing about by those Russian defenders. In a situation like that, all 11 men, all 11 men were within 15 yards of their own goal. The Russians, in a situation like that, will always fall back onto total defense. Now the referee is taking the name of a player at midfield. It looks like Ilya Mitic, number eight, is having his name taken. The referee says play on, and the Russians will put the ball into play. 15 minutes now to play, 30 minutes having elapsed. Clippers down by one goal to score two to one. What is the key difference so far in that one goal spread, Dennis, as the Clippers go and attack? I think the Russians are a yard faster, which I hardly can. Sinaloa's in a wonderful chance here! He tried to fool his man. He put the ball between himself and the defender and then flicked it, trying to get Kowalik coming the other way. That was right into the hands of goalkeeper Radikov. I think the Russians are just a yard faster at the moment, and they're certainly a very hard side. Uh, All Russian teams have the, uh, the reputation of playing hard, aggressive, but good football. And this uh, Kiev side is no exception. I think uh, also, uh, Mario, that uh, Fernandez should tend to take the ball through more himself. He's trying to create uh, scores for other, other players, and his great strength is his explosive shooting and bursting through on his own. He's a little too modest in his play at the moment. The pushing foul, Sefer pushing number 11, Porkuyan, and the referee awarding a free kick. Now the Clippers side really has strengthened itself by adding the uh, two players, the Kowalik and Fernandez, and they're doing remarkably well against the side that is well known internationally. The Clippers, of course, have not toured yet overseas. Dinamo with the ball. Some fine footwork on this very slippery turf. Cleared away. And here comes Marin. Marin on the right. Getting the ball, putting it through to Hoffman. Hoffman running onto the ball, passing it beautifully to Fernandez, who fakes his man, stops it with the outside, puts it back right to Davidovich, who is moving in. Puts it back to Hoffman, who's looking now, puts it back to Davidovich, and a shot wide. Again, there were six, six Russian defenders there, marking three Clippers forwards. The Russians have a great facility for moving back quickly in defense and packing their penalty area. Whenever oh, bad shot. He had an opportunity. Probably oh. could have held that ball longer. A wonderful opportunity then, but he took a quick shot. A hopeful one, I think. Number nine, Puzac. <laughs> Russians, Puzac breaking through, giving that long ball through the middle. Stojanovic coming out of the nets to get it. Ball being put on the left side to Gavrich to go in the attack. Clippers in blue, moving left to right, down one goal. 12 minutes to play in this first half. Basically, even with a 4-2-4 system, there will be constantly two forwards up, two forwards acting as strikers, uh, ready to play the ball to the other two strikers who will take the ball through, through on the burst. Very quick runner, Sefer is as a fullback, trying to go through, the ball caroms off his legs, and Dinamo... On with that score, California Clippers down one goal against Dinamo Kiev, two to one. Let's pause for this commercial message. But across the goal mouth, taken safely by number four, Levchenko puts it way out in midfield. Hoffet finds Davidovich, but too high for him. Now, is there any similarity as far as the connection between Dinamo Moscow and Dinamo Kiev, are they separate clubs playing in separate cities? No tie? Uh, no, they're, they're completely, they're two of the finest clubs in uh, uh, Russia. Uh, both clubs, too. Great pass by Porkuya, number nine, all by himself. And he just slips the ball around the goalkeeper. Number nine, Puzac, surprising and fooling Stoyanovic with a sort of a banana shot that went around him on the ground. Wonderful goal, uh, Mario, shows the utter class of Puzac. Uh, he was under pressure there, he quickly went forward onto that ball and it seemed with the goalkeeper coming out quite correctly that he couldn't get the ball. But he hit it with the outside of his right foot and just sliced it inside the post. A remarkable goal. 
Score now, Dinamo Kiev in this first half with about 11 minutes to play, leading three to one. California Clippers goal came very early in the game as a retaliatory measure for the first goal scored in the first minute by Dinamo. Here we see again Puzac running through and then slicing it by and no chance at all for Stojanovic to control his balance. All three goals so far by the Russians has come as a result of the loose break. The long ball that caught uh, the California Clippers defense square. Given a one-on-one -on -one situation, a forward will normally always beat his man. Russians hustling, conserving their energy when they have to, and here's that beautiful long ball. The linesman waiting, he calls it a goal kick. I think as the game wears on, the heavy conditions are going to tell against one or other of the teams. And at the moment, uh, I would favor Moscow Kiev as being the fitter of the two teams. Well, that's what those press releases keep saying, that uh, the people who have observed them in training here in Northern California at all the places that they practice during their one-week stay have been amazed at their uh, fantastic physical fitness and that they've been able to play every day and never seem to want to stop running. Yes, two hours they work out every day, constant running and scrimmaging. It's not just uh, light work from what I gather, and we're looking forward to seeing them in Southern California when they come up there to practice. And here we have a breakthrough for Davidovich. Oh, low ball cleared away by the Russian defense. All these uh, play Russian players, uh, Mario, are, of course, amateurs under the Russian system, though many of them, in fact, really are state supervised, and many of them also are students of physical education, which is some indication of the tremendous fitness that they have. Oh, I don't mean to be derogatory, but I think that the, the people who follow Russian sports call that, I think, if it's not professionalism and not amateurism, it's shamateurism, Sham because really what they are are paid uh, athletes of the state for the most part. Uh, yeah. Whether you're a soldier or a locomotive worker, uh, you in essence have time to play lots of the football and therefore hone up on your skill. Here's Kowalik through, trying to dribble, gets tripped down, and we have a free kick outside of the penalty area. Direct free kick. The uh, Clippers will probably have a set move for this. Either someone taking a, a really hard shot. Right below us uh, from our announce booth here, we see Dr. Obradovich sitting on the bench with the two owners of the Clippers, Toby Hilliard and Joe O'Neill, and they're having their own little discussion as to what. Great shot over the goal bar. Yes, he tried to hook it in, a, a curling shot, but he hoped to go into the top left-hand corner. It just went about a foot wide. One of the interesting things in world competition, Mario, is that the Olympic Games, which of course is for amateur teams, has always been dominated by Eastern European teams, the Russians, the Yugoslavs, uh, and so on, where these amateur players, so-called, in fact, are allowed to play at, uh, at uh, Olympic competition, whereas uh, the true professionals from teams like Germany and Britain, of course, can't play in Olympic competition. Hungary won the Olympic champions against Bulgaria, if I recall right, yes. and it's always an Eastern European team. Now, the World Cup matches coming up in 1970 give us here in the United States a great opportunity to see some of the greatest players and greatest national teams of the world who will be meeting in Mexico City, 17 of them, and the United States has a good chance at this time. Russia on the attack, Dinamo Kiev. For Kuyan, great shot deflected out of bounds. Pence. And we have a corner kick. Pants moving up there. The Russians are, are be, trying to uh, bring an extra man with this lead, uh, two-goal lead. They're trying to bring the extra man up in attack. They'll probably play a slightly looser game. They, they've Stupid taken advantage does. of the uh, conditions best of all. They're 39 minutes gone, Dennis. 3-1 the score. Kiev in charge of this game at this point. Has there been any letdown that you can visualize as far as the Clippers, or are they still pressing to get those uh, tying goals which they need, all uh, two of them? Well, the Clippers don't seem to be able to uh, put the long ball through and, and, and get a man free. It could be that the Russian marking is too close, but I think the Russians are making much better use of the conditions. They're uh, not... Uh, they're all capable of dribbling the ball, and they're first-class ball artists, but we're seeing very little dribbling on the Russian side. They're using the ball, trying to create the long ball through. Seeing this as an exhibition game, the Russians are not really letting... Oh! Oh! Kowalik had a chance 
headshot from Fernandez to him on his right foot, and he balloons the ball. Great opportunity for that first timing shot. Had he hit it right, would have been like the first goal the Russians put in. Oh, yes. It was a first-class chance there, but he, he rather lifted his head and let fly. It was all or nothing. Very tall, rangy goalkeeper. Is that I've never seen a Russian team play other than Yashin and the national side, Dennis. Are they all that tall and rangy? Uh, well, yes. I, 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 I've, every Russian goalkeeper I've seen so far has been well over six feet. Uh, Yashin, I think, of course, was the most famous, the most typical example of it. Porkuyan with the left foot, putting it in the middle, cleared by Hoffbett. Clippers with the ball. Kiros coming into the middle. Looking for someone, finds Sefer, charging onto the ball. Sefer and Marin looking to combine. Marin gets the ball, puts it deep across the middle. And it's anyone's ball, the ball cleared away by Dinamo. Number nine, Puzac, who scored that last goal, putting a deep ball through, and it skims on the turf. And it's showing uh, the Russians are moving from defense into attack quicker and more efficiently than the Clippers side. The Clippers not getting back when their attacks break down. Ball from Davidovich to Kowalik. Kowalik with the ball, loses it. Last touch by Dinamo. John Kowalik, a good example of the aggressive American player, player with all his background in this country. Constantly on the move. See the overrunning of the ball, very cleverly played to draw the man out. Again, using those shoulder charges, which are quite legal. Great exhibition of soccer. The ball being kept in the air like a circus act. Head shots, brilliant jumping kicks. Davidovich with the ball, puts it too far in front, loses it. Touch last by the Russians. The Russians prepared to play the squares in defense until they can keep keep the ball, keep the ball all the time until they can get a man free. Off that putting a bad pass, intercepted. Now, all of a sudden, the Russians have four on four. Quickly moving into the attack. Number 10, Serebryanikov puts it out. And the linesman puts his flag up for the first time, offside. Explain that. The offside rule, the only major rule that fans have uh, picking up, he was in front of the player as the ball was played. He was in front of the last defender as the ball was played. Clippers with the ball, half bet to Davidovich. About three minutes left to go. Dinamo Kiev in the lead, three to one at this point. Davidovich with the ball, very cleverly, puts it across the middle to Hoffvet. Hoffvet breaks through two defenders, loses the ball to number seven, Bagovic, and number nine, Puzac, darting across, tearing away from his defenders all the way to the other side of the field. Porkuyan with the ball. Porkuyan still with the ball, it's a foot race, Chop and Porkuyan, and Chop just slams it out of bounds. And with the score, Dinamo Kiev 3, California Clippers 1. We'll be back with more exciting action after this important message. And, and there's a, an infraction. No, it's a corner kick, I believe, that has been awarded to the Dinamo team to be taken by their World Cup world-class player, Porkuyan. 3-1, 2 minutes, 12 seconds to go. Great shot high. Stojanovic jumping, catching it very safely. Kiros tearing down the left side of the field. Cuts in the middle, looking for an open player, beats his man again. Davidovic coming out to help and puts it across the field to Marin. Marin now with the ball. Hoffet trailing him on the right. Puts it out to Hoffet. Hoffet must get it into the center. He does. And Kowalik is there, the great scorer from Chicago. Tries to beat his man on a dribble, loses it on a sliding tackle. Mitic with the ball. Puts it into the center with a right in swing. Oh, right into the hands on a one bouncer. It's becoming apparent, Mario, that the uh, Clippers at the moment don't have a man in midfield who can hit an accurate long through pass. They're trying to work the oh, open out from midfield with a good 30 or 40 yard pass that's really dangerous. It's led to two out of the three goals. That goal kick went 70 yards. 70 yards on that last goal kick from their tall goalkeeper, Radikov. Russians on attack. Puzac with the ball, breaks through. The screen still has the ball, gets on the line and right into the hands of Stojanovic. 
Another scoring attack thwarted by the Clippers, but a bad pass to number six, Turianchik, and he puts it wide. As I said before, we'll see very little shooting from far out because uh, that area is much too heavy to get a, a good shot in. The goalkeeper had it well covered. Like to know what kind of a crowd we have. It is very cold here at Kizar. The wind is blowing at this time. There are some blue skies, but also some threatening clouds hovering around. If it rains uh, again here, I think the field will completely be a mud patch. Kowalik with the ball, heads it, Fernandez. Still with the ball, trips. No, no foul, no harm, play on. Turianchik with the ball, ball put into the middle. Hoffet coming up, puts it out to the left, to Kiros, Kiros. John Kowalik, a touch of the actor there. He, he was nowhere near foul, but he hurled himself about five yards inside the penalty area, trying to get a penalty, which of course would have been a free kick straight at goal. But uh, the referee not buying it. Very good officiating. The ball game is well in hand. There has been no real brutality. There's been huff, huffing and puffing and very tough, uh, particularly the shoulder charges from the Russians. Kiros with the ball for the California Clippers on the left. They're behind three to one. And unofficially, no time is left on the scoreboard. Three to one, Clippers down. Ball cleared away. Scissor kick by Sefer. Kiros with the ball, puts it into the middle. Mitic with the ball, trying to break through the defense and is tripped. And we have a free kick. Free kick unofficially, no time on the scoreboard. Clippers down three to one. An opportunity, direct free kick just outside of the penalty area. Yes, he probably, I think he's going for it. Yes, there's going to be a set move here. Three of them lining up. One of them will possibly step over the ball. Now the referee says, I'm not going to let you kick that ball until you get 10 yards away. Davidovich fakes the kick. Kowalik is over and the ball hits the goal bar. Mitic hit the goal bar. No time of unofficially. That's a good way of taking a free kick. Three men ran at the ball. The two of them stepped over it, trying to force a hole in that uh, wall of Russian players. What a great... Oh, Kiros beats his man on the left, puts it in the middle. Kiros still with the ball on the left wing. Unofficially, no time left on the scoreboard. Clippers coming a little more into the game when they shoot early. Three to one, Clippers down, only the first half. They had tied it 1-1 in the early minutes of the game. Dinamo getting two quick goals later on. Sefer now of the Clippers turning around. And there's the whistle for the first half. And the final... They have two men responsible for the soccer resurgence here in Northern California and hopefully all of California. On my right, Mr. Joe O'Neill, one of the owners of the Clippers. On my left, the other owner, Toby Hilliard. I'll talk with Mr. O'Neill only because he's taller and has a hat. Uh, Mr. O'Neill... What are your thoughts about this being a success as far as this type of game, an international game between a foreign side of a high caliber and your team? Well, our only success, real financial success last year was when we played foreign teams. We uh, drew good crowds and people seemed to take a great interest. As a matter of fact, today, after I don't know how many days and days of rain, this is a pretty fair turnout, I believe, Mario. Does this give you uh, an optimistic look as to the future of soccer with a turnout like this in spite of the inclement weather you've had here this past week? Oh, I definitely think so. I think we're going to pursue this program and bring in top teams wherever possible. Thank you, Mr. O'Neill. Mr. Hilliard, you've been with us three years now. I think I've had the pleasure of working with you. This is going to be the third year. What are your thoughts on this great game of soccer that you knew nothing about three years ago? I still don't know anything about it, but I, I certainly enjoy watching it. And I, uh, one of the great things about soccer, I have a, a guest here today who's never seen it before, and he's just as excited as I am, having watched uh, quite a lot of it now. And it's the one game that my wife gets a big kick out of. All the girls do. I, I like it. That was a very bad pun, but I'll accept that from you, seeing that you are the, about the big kick. But... Uh, <laughs> The negotiations with a Russian team of the stature and caliber of Dinamo Kiev, was it very difficult in getting them to come here to the United States to play your team and be guests of yours here in Northern California? Well, it was arranged through uh, the Russian Soccer Federation. Uh, we didn't really know what team we were going to get when we, when we asked the, the Russian Federation for a team to play against. And uh, they sent us the best, and I think that's fine. I wish it wouldn't look quite so good today, but they sent us the best. Well, the interesting thing, as I've observed, is not only your professional program, which has really been 
a successful one over the years, at least from the outlook that you are building fans, but also this great youth program that you both men are very interested in. What is being done to get American boys more involved in soccer and get them out here as potential paying fans in the years to come? Mr. O'Neill? Uh, we started an uh, entered a team in the Peninsula League. We're going to aim at mostly 18-year-old boys or under. Mm -hmm. We are continuing with an active clinic program, using our players, coaches, uh, trainers, and so forth, and we've already seen a fantastic growth in the interest in soccer because of this. Mr. Hilliard, what do you have to add to that? Well, can I comment on that? Last, uh, last summer, we had the great pleasure, through the cooperation of the so uh, California Soccer Football Association and the Hunters Point Boys Club, we took 30 kids down in the country for two weeks for a soccer camp. And the net result of that was uh, a very good team from Hunter's Point is now in the league. And you might remember last year at our Santos game, we played at halftime and, uh, and beat some boys that, they, that had played a lot more soccer. All right, we want to thank you gentlemen for being with us. And this is halftime. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this very important message. to spare inside the inside the post. He, he cut it even finer than that. He hit the post itself and it went in off there. Tony Knapp, incidentally, takes exactly the same sort of kick. All right, and we're at about eight minutes of play into the second half. The Clippers are within one goal of tying this game. The score, Dinamo Kiev three, Clippers two, and the goal, that second goal of the Clippers came from a penalty kick by Fernandez. Pepe now has two for the game. Let's see if he can equalize uh, Puzac's hat trick. Russians free kick, high into the penalty area, cleared away by Chop, head shot, cleared away by Chop, dangerous play into that penalty area. Yes, he was offside as well, I think that wasn't, it was both offside and dangerous. Davidovich with the ball, they're still playing one man shy, 10 men for the Clippers, 11 for Kiev. Oh, and the Russians now turning an opportunity into their favor. Davidovich passing it to Hofvet. Hofvet coming to midfield, putting it out to the left to Kiros. Kiros of the Clippers in his blue jersey, going down the left sideline, hesitating, halting, looking, passing back to Hofvet. Hofvet with the ball, puts it back to Kiros. Watch Fernandez break into the middle. Deep ball, long. Oh, Mar oh great shot here, Sefer. And a left-footed shot. Yes, he got the ball. It went off a, a, a Russian defender to be a corner that Fernandez is going to take. No, he's giving it to Kiros. Three to two, Kiev. We're early in the second half. Fireworks already. Midic still being tended to off the sidelines. Clippers playing one shy, and here's their corner kick. Ball high in the air. Fernandez going up. Yes, pushing the pushing offense there. There's always a lot of jostling in the penalty area as the players try and move in for the headshot uh, from corner kicks. Radikoff booms it downfield, high in the air. Pushing from the back, I would suspect. That's a foul. Uh, number two, that's a Great kick for the clip. Davidovich with the ball right in the center circle, trying to get it out to Marin. No chance. Yes, Russians. Davidovich giving the right sort of pass, but he hasn't quite got the accuracy that the Russian midfield players have to put the, the long ball through to the right player. Porkian, the world-class winger, putting it into the center to Puzat. Oh, brilliantly defended there by number six, Davidovich. Number seven, Bagovic with the ball, beats his man, comes across the middle, and Stojanovic down on his knees to pick the ball up. Midic is on the field. Here he is, the boy injured with the ball, giving it to Davidovic. Oh, and a missed ball, and Kowalik now fighting, fighting for that ball. Sefer, bad pass. Useless. I think uh, uh, Dr. Bradovich has told them to let the ball do the work, swing it about, but at the moment they still don't have the accuracy. Sabo. Sabo. Push the man, use yes. his hands. <laughs> Little 
discussion between the referee and the captain of the Clippers, Milan Chop. Remarkably incident-free uh, game, Mario, considering that there are problems of language between these two teams. But uh, both teams seem to be quite happy with the referees. Great pass out to the left to Porcuyan. Porcuyan still with the ball. Sefer using his physicalness. He's a big boy. Porcuyan a bit smaller in size and getting shoved around, getting a free kick as a result. So there's only one goal between it. There's a little bit of feeling creeping into the goal the game. Clippers obviously realize they're in with the chance. Left-footed kick. He's going to get it high in the air towards the goal. Oh, punched away. There's a... He was all by himself for Kuyan, number 11. He swung around and he ballooned it. He should have had an easy goal. Fourth goal it might have been. And Paul Kuyan and Puzak could have either got. Uh, I thought Puzak was going to hit it in. He had the best chance of the two. But he let it run to Paul Kuyan. He just swung and put it over. Russians dominating at least these 10 minutes that we've seen here. That is a soggy field. You see how the ball just fell on the turf and just stuck there. Russians on the attack, moving quickly on the left. Oh, look at a foot race, trying to get around his man. Sefer gets the ball taken away by Chop, who throws it to Gavridge. And there's an indication of a man's confidence, his own speed and fitness, when he pushes it past the fullback and completely tries to outrun him. Davidovich, off that. Clippers now. Midic putting the ball back to Gavrich. Oh, bad pass, intercepted. Russians looking for a player. Oh, a pass to the right of the player, number nine, Puzac. Couldn't turn around and get the ball, so the Clippers now have an opportunity. Marin working his way in, beating his man, putting it to the middle. Off fed. The game is getting a little faster, a little more Chris tackling. Midic cutting in the middle. Kiros, two on one. Oh, Fernandez had a chance, like you said, Dennis had. He trapped it, turned around, he might have had it. Tried to give it away. Kiros with the ball. Davidovich. Shot about the 25 yards out of the goal, wide. Radikoff with the ball. A foul called by the referee too many steps I believe under the new rule and therefore it is going to be an indirect free kick awarded to the California Clippers inside the penalty area score three to two and about 15 minutes of 45 minutes gone in the second half you notice the Russians will make a wall between the where the ball is being played and the goal here just two men Goalkeepers put the ball down at the request of the referee, and the Clippers are now saying, Consult your linesman. Does this bring to mind a very fancy game that was played in Wembley? Yes, I have my hand up there, Mario. In, at Wembley in the World Cup, uh, the Russian referee uh, gave advice that gave England its third goal. The goal will turn out to be the winning goal. Remember, the line is part of the field of play, the ball must totally cross the line. And the referee says the ball did not totally cross the line and the therefore is disallowed that goal. So the Clippers now will have to make up that third goal some other way. It's three to two still. The goal, the ball did not cross the goal line seemingly and therefore the goal was disallowed by the referee and the Clippers now have to go and find the equalizer all over again. I think the play more spirited now. There's a big effort by the Clippers now and the Russians are little, becoming a little wild under this pressure. That sort of pass. Puzac, number nine, passing to number 11, Porkuyan, who gave a bad pass. 
And the Clippers now moving. Blue shirted Clippers moving from right to left. This is Kiros trying to beat his man. He does. Huff fed. Looking for an opening. Tries to dribble around. He's going to have to play it back to Gavrich or across field. He does to Chop. Chop back. Oh, well played. Huff fed with the ball. Back into the middle. Gavrich. Davidovich, number six, Clippers now on the attack, moving well. Number seven, Marin, paired beautifully by the Russians, out of bounds, throw in. Yes, the Clippers are beginning to run now, they're beginning to run into the open spaces, and they're looking much more dangerous as a result. Russians intercepted, Dinamo Kiev in white on the attack. Slowing the ball down, trying to get their men up. Well stopped by Kiros. Kiros plays it into Hoffett. Hoffett of the Clippers. Into Mitic. Mitic is looking, turning around, trying to find a player to help him out. Gavrich comes up on the left, puts the ball deep, too high. Yes, the Clippers fall still allowing this Russian defense to get back in time by holding the ball too long in midfield. Played shot from the player's bench. Looks like an old goalkeeper still wanting to try out his fisting. Oh, Midic clear into the middle to Hoffed. Clippers playing well. Exciting action-packed soccer. Davidovich breaking through. His man getting out there. Sliding tackles by the Russians. Fernandez now. Now the Russians have pulled all 11 players into the defense. Fernandez has to put... Should have passed off, decided to go against the goal, put it high over the goal bar. It's getting very dark here at Kizar Stadium. About 20 minutes of play in the 45-minute second half period elapsed. Kiev 3, Clippers 2. Uh, John Hoffed, uh, Mario, is playing a big part in this Clipper, Clipper revival. He's coming up as the extra man now. He's constantly giving an extra man an attack, coming up from his halfback position. And he's playing... Uh, the biggest part so far, I think, in the fact that the Clippers seem to have uh, four forwards now instead of the traditional three they've been using in the first half. Uh, Dinamo Kiev, Dennis, has put in its first substitute of the game. Number 11, Porkuyan, has gone out, the world-class player, and trying to identify the player on the left wing with a clean white jersey, which is a distinguishing mark this afternoon. So bear with us until we find out who he is. Medved. Serebryanikov. Now, this is the player that just came in. Number 14. Number 14, that's uh, Semenov. Rashilov Semenov. All right, he has the same first name as Molotov, if you remember, Vyacheslav, and the last name is Semenov, and he's come in for, for Kuyan, the left wing. This is he, number 14, just passing it back to Puzac. Soviets are on the attack. Cleared away brilliantly by Milan Chop. Hoffet. Mumsilo Gavrich of the Clippers. Hoffet with the ball. Beats his man. He's got to get away from him. There's that bad pass. Intercepted by Puzac, who has a hat trick that afternoon. This ball getting very heavy now. Very difficult to work in midfield. More essential than ever to play the long ball, let it do the work. Minic on the left, and a great pass by Fernandez. Minic puts it into the middle, and Davidovich is all by himself. Marin on the right, puts it into the center, no one there. Cleared away by Medved, into the middle. Russians occupy the center field all by themselves. Moving on to the attack. Five defenders back against three. So. Sabo puts it back. And a pass that goes to the left of Medved. Out of bounds. Clippers ball. This is Mitic, number eight of the Clippers. Three-year veteran here in the United States. One of the stars last year of the Clippers. A very high-scoring striker. Sosnikin bangs it out of there. Well into Clipper territory.
23 minutes gone, approximately 22 minutes of play left. Kiev three, Clippers two. Nice pass, too deep for Davidovich. Russians on the attack. Almost a stalemate. Now, Mario, I think the, uh, the Clippers are really coming more into the game, and the fact that uh, perhaps their conditioning isn't, isn't as bad as we thought. Uh, Pushing the Russians, foul. The Russians are not as explosive as when they started. Their first three goals were as a result of explosive movements when they really went through fast. Oh, mistimed jumper. Tall halfbacks and fullbacks of the Russians make it look so easy. Oh, holding on Puzac. Looked like an American footballer rugby tackle, Dennis. Yes, that, uh, it was holding from behind. As Puzas went through, he scored three goals already, and they certainly weren't going to let him score another one. Free kick. The Clippers will be asked, politely at first, by the referee to get ten yards away from that ball. Uh, this is a usual gambit, actually, to uh, stand near the ball uh, so that the wall can get in, in position. Referee is asked that they move back 10 yards. Let's see how, if the Russians have a trick shot that they're going to use. Yes. Oh, it's a swerving shot that went around that wall, and Stojanovic was up to the challenge. Here's Davidovic for the Clippers. That's the sort of shot uh, Maria, the great Pele puts in from free kicks with regularity. He can put a, a spin on the ball. Oh, look at that beautiful pass. Cut off by Hofved. Stojanovic throws it to Zephyr. Steve, you're working on the right. A very exciting, strong player for the Clippers in his first season with them. Hungarian boy that they've just acquired. Zephyr with the ball on the right wing. Crossing the mid-stripe to Mitic. Loses the ball. Zephyr again with it. Zephyr still with the ball. It's an interesting call. Remarkably good footwork, beautiful footwork for a man who's playing at fullback. Zephyr looked more like a, a forward than a fullback when he was controlling that ball up the wing. Here we go, the Russians on the attack, number 10 breaking into the middle. Trying to keep the ball away from Kiros. Puts it back. Sabo. Cut off. Called for an interference. Didn't get it. Midic with the ball. Puts it up to Davidovich. Now Davidovich with the Clippers. Running, running. Tripping foul by number seven, Bagovic. Bagovic hasn't been in the game too much today. Mitic uh, com uh, uh, com uh, combining uh, with uh, Hofted is, is producing a much stronger midfield game now for the Clippers. Dangerous kicking, I think, there. No doubt about that from Shaw. He's kicking at head heights as the player went down to head it. Milan Chop, the chopper. It's a headhunter there, and the referee called him for it. Russians making space for themselves. Space oh. open. Great shot. Number 14, the substitute for Prokuryan in seven. Couldn't get a shot off. over the ball, Semenov, Yacheslav puts it across the middle, Midic traps it, looking to get it out of there, does to Hoffet, Hoffet back to Midic. Davidovich, holding foul, number seven, Bagovic again, called for the infraction. There's a lot of walking instead of running, uh, Mario, an indication of just how heavy these conditions. The ball is really very heavy now, and the player's feet must feel like lead. Kowalik. Oh. 
very sure footing in spite of the fact that the field is very wet, very soft. Tripping foul by Mitic. And Sabo. So these two teams meet again in Los Angeles. Sunday week when they will battle again. It's been a close game all throughout 50, 60 minutes that have been played so far. Cleared away safely. Hoff fed to Davidovich. Zephyr. Hoff fed again for the Clippers. Oh, brilliant clearance by the Russians. As the game's going on, uh, Clippers are coming more and more into the game. They're much sure of themselves. Michik is playing a much finer game at, in, in the center. He's taking over that role as midfield general. He's so badly missing in the first half. Sabo met the trip Fernandez. And I believe is going to have his name taken. Gavrich on a muddy patch here at Kizar Stadium. Take the free kick for the Clippers. 16 minutes officially left to go in this second half. Clippers down by one goal. Great players in the air, the Russians. They hurl themselves high. There's hardly a head ball that's gone, uh, a head shot that hasn't been taken by a Russian defender. Zephyr again was out of position, but fortunately was able to get the ball back again. Kiros with the ball. Huffed sliding in the mud trying to get the ball. Mitic. And a bad pass from Davidovich. Uh, Try to be a little fancy. Kowalik. Too much dribbling. Yeah. Clippers lose the ball. Clippers look so much more effective when they play on those drier, open parts on the wings. When they're in midfield, they don't quite have the same quality of ball player as the Russians to dribble through. Milan Chop coming there, saving the ball from going out, putting it back to Mamsilo Gavrich. Ball still in play. 14 minutes left to go. 3-2, to two, Kiev ahead exciting game that has kept 15,000 approximately fans here very warm from standing up clapping cheering and yelling we're in a very vocal type crowd oh yes there must be about over 15,000 here today and the umbrellas are going up as the rain starts coming down again that's right it is starting to rain and the umbrella brigade begins to unfold Clippers with the ball Kiro's trying to get it to Fernandez Fernandez still with the ball Beats his man, using his body as a shelter between the defender and the ball. Gives it to Hoffvet. Hoffvet to Gavrich. Still, the Clippers now really pressing the attack. More play. Oh, great ball long. Nine came screaming in for that header there, but again, he's only a little man. He was outjumped. Uh, with the fullback at least six inches taller than he. Kowale came from Poland, went to the Chicago Mustangs, and played in his first season in the North American Soccer League so well that he was the most valuable player of the league, won an automobile as a result of his efforts, also scored the most goals, and was in every all-star team in the North American Soccer League. the ball around this is Gavrich looking for Mitic lots of Yugoslavians on this side nine to be exact Fernandez still with the ball trying to cut it over oh and here's Mitic oh and a cannonball shot Shot 
attacks on goal by Kiros, by Fernandez. Repeated attacks on goal, repelled by Dinamo, and the fans just love it here this afternoon. Yes, this forward line of uh, Michi Kralik and Fernandez is beginning to click now. That all new. Uh, I, I didn't expect to see them at their best today, and Fernandez still isn't fit, but they're beginning really to come into the game. Particularly with Mitch Fernandez going through now. Davidovich with the ball, trying to, he can't lose it, he does. Oh, he was able to get back there and get the ball. Clippers still in possession. Gavrich to Davidovich, the midfield brain of this team. Oh, Milic on the give and go, try to hook it in. Milanca, oh, look where Stojanovic is coming, way out of his goal, cannot touch the ball with his hands. Russians beginning to protect this uh, one goal lead. They're, they've been going, having 10 men in defense most of the time. Brilliant sliding tackle, going for the ball and not for the man. Therefore, it's official. Marin, Marin, as some people call him, number seven, putting the ball out of play. Deep shot, no good. Five minutes and 19 seconds unofficially left to go. Any strategy changes, you think, Dennis? No, except that the Russians uh, are not... Uh... Uh, putting as many men up, they were using a con consistent four forwards at one stage now, but only one man is normally staying in the Clippers' half. Russians with the ball, mid-stripe, trying to find space. Here's Medved, international player, young man, puts the ball deep and through. Chop comes through and cuts it off. the Clippers are running. They're running and outplaying the Russians at their game. And the crowd is really behind the Clippers. Chop's playing a wonderful game. He's coming into the attack more and more, breaking up attacks. Great, great play. This is Fernandez. Brilliant try. Fernandez to Kowalik. Kowalik back to Fernandez. fighting for every ball that time putting his backside and with the score Kiev 3 Clippers 2 will be back with more exciting action right after this nine minutes 45 seconds to go the action and pace fast and furious now the Clippers behind by one Russians at the oh, brilliant save by Stojanovic on a shot by Puzak would have been his fourth goal Stojanovic down full length snaring that ball he thought he had him wrong footed but he changed direction quickly and flung himself to the right a fine save fine anticipation nine minutes 21 dennis three to two kiev over clippers and no one is leaving the stadium they think that the clippers have a chance not only to tie but to go ahead and win the clippers really have a very strong following here in northern california i think actually when these three Clippers forwards really get working together. This is going to be a very, very strong side. The early hesitation in defense is now over. Oh, and a brilliant save by Stojanovic. Again, sprawling full length, cutting off the angle and getting the ball. It just shows how quick Puzash can go through there. Just as I was talking, he went through on that long through ball. He was like a flash. Almost another goal. Only brilliant anticipation by the goalkeeper saved it. An interesting thing about an exhibition game like this, that the Russians are not content with a one-goal lead, that they want to go ahead and win convincingly, that they are a top side, and the Clippers really shouldn't be in this ball game as they seem to be this afternoon. Mitic on the attack for the Clippers, going right to left on your screen. Kowalik have to be pulled out. Mitic running through, pushing, shoving. Oh, no, they... What do we have? What kind of a foul? He was tackling from behind. He took the man's feet. There's no doubt. Seven minutes, 55 seconds to go. The crowd looking for that equalizer. The foul awarded to the Clippers, and the Clippers will have that free kick. The last free kick taken hit the goal bar just at the end of the second period. was nearly there it went off a Russian defender another foot and he'd have jabbed that one in this game has not been marred by 
any bad, dirty play at all. It has been tough. Not an inch given on either side. There's, there have been fair charges. And overall, the technique and caliber has been very high considering the, I think, very bad playing surface. Oh, yes, these conditions are bad. Uh, they're very tiring, too, at this stage of the season. There's a tremendous speed when he gets these three balls. Great acceleration after uh, over five yards, though he was offside on that, that occasion. This is Sefer, the very tall, strong fullback, and he's been held. Indication that the Russians are a little bit hustled now. They're, they're having to play harder to keep these clippers out. Six minutes and 31 seconds unofficially on the scoreboard. Kiev ahead by one goal, three to two. Clippers, many up. Here's Midich, just outside the penalty area. He's got to come through, takes a shot with his left foot right into the hands of Radikov. Radikov booms it out of there. And there's that deep, to oh, one on one, and Stoyanovich comes out and belts it with his feet. Step off the freshman coming in. Took that through pass, it was a brilliant pass. But again, fine anticipation by the goalkeeper. When that goalkeeper comes out of that 44 by 18 penalty area, he is like any other running player on the field. Cannot use his hands. Kowalik with the ball for the Clippers. Stops, turns, beats his man, looking for some help. Still with the ball. Puts it back. Here's Hoffett, three-year veteran. Puts the ball across the goal mouth. Kowalik again. Trying to find shooting. Oh, and he tried to find Fernandez. Medved, the international player, booms it out of there for the Russians. Semenov to Puzac. Puzac, the, the hat-trick man, three goals this afternoon. Always the very deadly striker. Chips the ball through. Stojanovic again coming out. Beautiful through ball. This is what the Russians have excelled in this afternoon. The ability to see the man running into the open space. It's given them three goals already. Five minutes and three seconds unofficially on the scoreboard. Kiev three, Clippers two. Clippers want to equalize, not go ahead. Just reading the scores uh, from England yesterday, Dennis, and Bobby Tambling of Liverpool scored in the 64th and 65th minute, so it can be done. Oh, yes, indeed. Uh, Tambling is a great opportunist. Shot at goal wide by Medved, who has come up from his right fullback position. I think this Russian side realized that they're using more and more this long through ball, relying on the greater speed of their forwards. And a slightly wide. Uh, um, the Clippers are now using not the traditional four, they've moved one man up in an effort to get this final goal. It makes them more vulnerable to the through ball, but uh, they're obviously going for the win. Well, the, the Russians the coming through now, playing all their players right in the Clippers' half of the field. The Clippers now having to get the ball out and well into attack if they're going to equalize. Three minutes, 55 seconds unofficially. Fine performances by both teams. Should the Clippers lose, nothing to be ashamed of. They've taken on the champions of all Russia, Dinamo Kiev, and really put them through a test. Three to two, and if it were not for, I think, an early lapse in defense, the score and the game might be a little different at this point. Fernandez tripped as he was breaking through. Oh, some bad blood now. Kiros coming across number 11. And with the score, Kiev three, California Clippers two. We're going to be back for the final three minutes after this important message. Three minutes to go, three to two. Free kick, Hoffvet, because Fernandez was pulled down. Kiros tried to get back at Medved. First really violent situation in the game. Some very, very bad pushing at this point. There's both players uh, having a go. The referee decides in favor of the Clippers. Now we have Gavrich pushing Puzac and saying, why are you wasting time? The clock is running. Let us get this free kick off. Two minutes, 33 seconds unofficially to go. The ball cleared away. Just been advised by the executive vice president of the Clippers, Derek Liechty, that the
the two teams have agreed to play again. In other words, they'll be playing in Los Angeles on March the 2nd at 2 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, here is Kiros into the clear. Puts it goal. Oh, brilliant save by Radikov. Brilliant diving save by Radikov. And that ball was curling into the far right-hand corner, but he used his great height, cat-like ability, and sprung across and took the ball. Fernandez being consoled there, 1 minute 51. What I was saying is that there will be a series which will be three games. And here's that brilliant save by Radikov. And now Fernandez being pushed by Soshnikin. And the referee now is calling for both teams to keep calm for the remaining 1 minute 34. I'm trying to tell you that there will be three games. This game today, the game in Los Angeles, March the 2nd, and they have agreed to play a rematch Sunday, March the 9th, right here again at Kizar Stadium. So the Dinamo Kiev team will be hosts of Northern California twice, once of Southern California. So great opportunity for soccer fans to come and watch some exciting play. Rhubarb going on at midfield. We've had a few uh, language problems there. Referee trying to explain to both sides the reasons for his decision. It's been a great game so far. Some very, very fine play throughout the game. The weather conditions have not been the best. There's the umbrella brigade of the California Clippers. Here backing their team about 15,000 strong and seeing their team really putting on a fine show. And if again, as I said, going back to that second goal, had it not been for that one defensive lapse, we might be tied up here in the final 34 seconds of play unofficially. So while the referee is trying to restore order, uh, the clock on the scoreboard is running, but I'm sure he's taking time out. Am I assuming wrong? No, he will be, uh, he should be, for this incident, be taking time out. It'll be probably, it shows 18 seconds, but I think more like two minutes. The referee is the sole arbiter of time. He just receives uh, help from the one, from the uh, official, official clock. It's been a very, very exciting game. We've been delighted. That is the Bay Broadcasting Company, KUDO, in bringing this match to you. Uh, we, Dennis and I, have been very happy being part of this telecast. The play really has been first class. Sefer putting it out of bounds. No time showing on that scoreboard clock. Kiev three, Clippers two, but that's unofficial. Puzac breaking through, three goals to his credit, putting it across the goal mouth, no one there. Kiros coming all the way back from his left wing position for the Clippers, now on the attack. Mitic trying to beat his man, gets jostled off the ball. Kiros was open then, but he didn't get the pass going up that left wing. There's yep. a few seconds to go, there's eight. Clipper men all up in attack. Cleared away safely by Soshnikin. Ball still in play. Russians touching it last. Not very many people have moved. Anything can happen. The scoreboard clock does show no time remaining. But play is still going on. Medved. Here's an opportunity. Sosnikin with Midditch one-on-one. -on -one. Marin with the ball, number seven, trying to get through the middle, and he does. Puts the ball out. Sefer putting it to Davidovich on the right. Ball put out of bounds. Referee looking at his watch, only a few seconds to play. He was doing everything now to try and get that equalizing goal. Bad pass. Last opportunity, perhaps, wasted by the Clippers. Chop, Semenov. Goalkeeper had to play it. Goalkeeper had to play it with his feet. He may not play the ball with his hands outside the penalty area. Otherwise, it's an indirect free kick. These two teams will tussle again. March 2nd in Los Angeles, and again here, March 9th, Kizar Stadium. It's been a very cold day for us, the booth being exposed as it is been overcast and there are threats now of serious heavy downpours but not one fan is moving all credit uh, Mario to this Kiev side though they've one goal ahead they're still playing loose they're not bringing everybody back into defense Kiros to Hoffet Clippers on the attack ball all the way across to Marin Marin with the ball chips it cleared 
cleared away by Krulikovsky. Clippers still with the ball. Zephyr puts it goalward high in the air. Charging the goalkeeper, I think. Krolik. Krolik giving about uh, five or six inches away in height. The Clippers are a different ball club than the club that we telecast past season. More exciting with the addition of Fernandez and Kowalik. More poised and therefore playing exceptionally well against this international famous side. So I, th I think except for possibly the, the speed of Puzak and Something like Zabo putting the ball through. There's been very, very little between those Chop's got to get it in that goal mouth area before the whistle blows. Sefer lofting it high. Kowalik. Yes, Dangerous the, play. He tried to bicycle. That's an overhead kick, a shot at goal. Uh, Kiros, but uh, he was in close proximity to a Russian player. I think the 15,000 plus fans who came out this afternoon are not disenchanted at all with the caliber of play and also with the performance of their Clippers who have done exceptionally well against a very high-powered side, the three-time Russian champions and present champions of all Russia, Dinamo Kiev, uh, who, by the way, for those of you who from the Ukraine will protest, yes, they are from the Ukraine and claim to be a separate entity in the USSR. That's the game. That's the game. That is the final whistle and the score. Dinamo Kiev has won this one. Three to two over the California Clippers and the fans are not unhappy. It's been a great...